I'm brushed. It's all good. It's all clean. It's all, it's all pearly. Welcome back to Spoonsville. Mad Max Fury Road. Today is what we're talking about. Yeah. Ugh. And I'm exhausted. <laughs> yeah. I'm just tired. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. It's late. Now it's my turn for the segment where we give each other 20 seconds to explain the entire movie in a brief little thing for those that haven't seen it and for those that have seen it but want a little refresher. A very short, bad uh, refresher. Here we go. It's about a guy named Max who is deeply traumatized from the death of a lot of basically everyone that he cared about in his life. He gets captured by Morton Joe, the main villain's war boys, uh, his cronies, and it follows as he is uh, captured. Uh, it follows Furiosa, who is trying to escape with the uh, breeders, the wives of the main villain. <laughs> it's too hard. <laughs> oh, but I like it though. I like the challenge. Okay, there we go. That was so bad. <laughs> well, I mean, good job for 20 seconds. Yeah. So first, I saw this movie in theaters, and the thing I'll always say about this movie, for me, it was an instant classic because it was the first movie since basically a movie I'd seen in childhood. You know, when you when you see movies as a kid, just everything is mind blowing, and you're just you're in awe. Everything is just so overwhelming. You can't wrap your head around it. And this was the first movie basically I've seen as an adult that gave me that same feeling that I would have from movies as a kid. When I first saw it, it was just so insanely fast and I was just like shaking the whole time. Like it was like, it was a good kind of not knowing what's going on, but it was just the most exhilarating thing, uh, movie experience I had since I was a kid. It's the same director that did the first three Mad Maxes like 20, 30 years ago, but that's a really tough thing I think for a director to pull off where it feels almost like they've honed their craft even more. They've gotten better after a long break and they come back to basically reboot the, the franchise and then they knock it out of the park. So good on you for George Miller to just keep getting better. Um, yeah, and his wife edited the movie. That's Pretty so sure. cool. Yeah. yeah, she won too, I think. Oh yeah, Mad Max cleaned up at the Oscars too. That was a good year. It was The Revenant and Mad Max were head to head getting all the, all the awards. Yeah. So I'm not into, I'm not a huge fan of action movies. If you look at it at face value, it is something that's low on plot, but something about the movie for me, even mm -hmm. as an action movie, there were lots of things about it that made me feel like there's much more to the movie. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for me, those are always my favorite movies that can do both the just amazing, intense, creative action, and then also have so many other themes going on. Because yeah. a movie like Transformers, I'm bored within like five, ten minutes. And that, there's action going on, crazy stuff going on there. But I'm just, I'm I, like, I just don't care, yeah. right? With movies like this, again, it's another one that I think succeeds like The Matrix, where there's a lot of great stuff you could look into, but it's also just so much fun and so easy to watch and so entertaining. That's a really hard balance to, to do. So anyone that can pull that off, you know, yeah. um, like I don't, I'm not even a car guy, but that movie just makes me love all, I love all the cars in that movie. They're also, also like so unique and got so much character and personality, each one of them. It's one of those movies that there's so much love and care. You can just tell. I know it's hard to say to someone that you, if you wanted to compare, I don't know, even like a, I don't want to hear like a, Fast and Furious 8 versus this movie. You're like, there's just so much personality and so much passion put into this movie. There's so yeah. much uniqueness. There's so much uh, world building in a very quick amount of time. There's a little, they sprinkle in backstory. There's a, there's a lot of, a lot of beautiful stuff. I love the whole thing with, uh, you know, 160 days ride that way. There's nothing but salt. You know, if you, if you can't fix what's broken here inside or where you are already, it doesn't matter. You can keep running from your problems, but it, it's still going to be there. You have to stand and deal with your issues. It's like, let's let's work on climate change and, and inequality and things and all the issues going on on Earth. Let's not go to Mars and just hope that it turns out better starting a colony on Mars. Let's actually fix what's going on here now. Everyone except the Morton Joe is being exploited. You have uh, the war boys who are out there just to do the dirty work or just the, the labor, there's there's the fighting war boys and they're the ones that are just there to just crank the gears of the machines and all the apparatus that Morton Joe owns. Uh, then there are his his harem, I guess, wives that are just there to pass on his lineage. Then there are the other wives, I guess, or other mothers that they basically just milk for yeah. their milk. You know, that also for me brought up themes of the commodification of the human body, mm -hmm. which is something again that applies now more so 
in you know through marketing mm-hmm. today <laughs> like the human body yeah. is commodified more with like in marketing practices mm-hmm. right like you're buying a juice and there's a girl um wearing a swimsuit and so she's drinking that juice you're mm-hmm. looking at the girl but the girl you're supposed to be interested in the juice yeah. right that that is an example of you know um like the commodification of the human body mm-hmm. especially obviously we see that much more with women right yeah. um so in this world it is just it's either fertility or milk mm-hmm. or it is blood mm-hmm. right because yeah. max is literally a blood yeah. bag yeah. for the war boys yeah. and they don't recognize the humanity of these people whatsoever which i think is very relevant to again past present and mm-hmm. most likely future mm-hmm. you know because think about it right like let's say you're watching a movie the actors that you love a lot of the times you separate yourself from their humanity mm-hmm. you watch a movie they give you pleasure and they turn into this object you know that movie companies can basically um get something from like they can make money off of mm-hmm. these people who you don't even realize or you are not necessarily sensitive or empathetic to the fact that they're people just like you mm-hmm. and so that's an example of present day human um commodification of the mm-hmm. human body yeah. everybody's suffering yeah. all all around yep yeah yeah everyone's in prison everyone's a commodity yeah yeah these things are the reason um that i really was captivated throughout by the mm. movie. I did find that the scene, the car chase, it went on for so long. Like I was really tired, I won't lie. I was really tired. It went on for long. It was super interesting. I even liked the fact that you had the guitar guy. Mm-hmm. I think probably some people might think, "Oh, that was just over the top." <laughs> However, you have to think about it, right? Mm-hmm. Joe is a very strategic guy. Mm-hmm. And when you're going to war, look yeah. at look at um like literally anything there's nothing in that movie that mm-hmm. felt like it was over the top or unnecessary it yeah. felt like it was extremely strategic yeah. um and that that's for me yeah. the difference is uh you know I I look at some movies and the villain will become all big and mutated and it's like this big boss battle at the end of a video game that stuff feels like over the top for me or when you know there's they're they're just fighting big mechs just for the sake of it but for me um i guess some people could see that as like flame thrower guitar metal guitar writing on a on a big rig but first of all that just in my mind is just so fucking cool so i don't even care but exactly it does serve a purpose it's a yeah. historical thing it's like since romans and much before then they'd have drummers they'd have musicians war musicians people playing to get people into the yeah into the the mindset of we're going to be victorious. I I I love it. I love yeah. every single bit. So many cool practical effects and CGI effects. I'm also a lover of CGI as well. Whatever you got to use to tell your story, you know. I just I love it. And and there's this I could go on for hours about it. We don't he, about just, Tom Hardy Tom, or about Tom, Bad uh, <laughs> cuz we cuz we know. <laughs> Tom Hardy. He everybody. loves Tom to Hardy do. first, yeah. then me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At least your second villain. <laughs> no no that's not true uh but yeah it's just it's it's uh it's just a a monumental movie for me um again every every way that i everything that i look for in a movie you know um the 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 world building the the uh, the immersion of it the the themes the the music the everything just the the editing is phenomenal yeah, but, and the uh, costumes were really were great oh yeah, too. So cool. Everything was just God. so creative. The slang, even the guy, the money guy, Eden Schlanger. What was the what the the money guy? Oh yeah, What's his name? with the uh, he had the people eater. Yeah, he had yeah. elephantitis. Yeah, which potentially wasn't even elephantitis, right? It was probably right. just like I think maybe they were trying to say to portray gluttony. Yeah, where you see so many people, you have these people um, that are living at the bottom of mm-hmm. the. What is that? Where the place where the uh, Joe and the soul and the yeah. war boys are living? Yeah, and they're all so so deprived of yeah. everything, yeah. starved of food, yeah. water, life, yeah. you name it. And um, and so then you have this guy, the money guy, who is just so fat, like yeah. he can't even move. He has to be yeah. moved yeah. and carried into yeah. the car, right? Yeah. That is just, um, yeah, like where people are, some people are living in access. I mm-hmm. think that was the thing about it. You got people that are being um, brainwashed into thinking that they shouldn't even want enough water for themselves, which yeah. is the most bare of necessities. 
I love that he combines it to like, or uh, compares it to an addiction. He's like, and you'll resent its absence. I mean, the way he describes it is like how he, he's basically describing like having a lot of money or having a lot of stuff because you'll resent not having it and you'll get addicted to it and you'll want more. And you, But he's talking about water. You know, it's that kind of thing. It, it's kind of talking to those that are already the most dis disenfranchised, beaten down, and you mm -hmm. want them to, you are tricking them into thinking that them even wanting just a little bit of water to make it through the day is them being greedy. So they should be thankful for the warlord for, for giving have. them just that yeah. little bit, you yeah. know, and that's how you keep people in that, that spot that they're in. And yeah, how scarcity and uh, violence and domination amongst people can cause such extremes in, you got very gluttonous, greedy, unhealthy people on one hand that have way too much and that's not healthy or needed yeah. at all. And then you have people on the other extreme, both are very, uh, unhealthy for people you know um you can just get a lot out of just that one character you yeah. know and and a movie for me that's great and stands the test of time and that i always you know you're always thinking about and you can reference it is a movie where there's a minor mi villain character has more thought and more character put into it than like a whole movie you know like i love the part even when morton joe and, and the rest of his gang are are they they lost the the good guys got away from them but they're turning back so then you know, and then Warren Joe's just playing an instrument and he's singing, like he's humming something to himself, kind of doing a chant, you know? And I was like, I love that because again, in, in less um, interesting movies, they wouldn't feel the need to give the villain kind of a kind of an interesting personality trait or quirk mm -hmm. like that. But with this movie, it's just overflowing with personality, in my opinion. So yeah. when you have the main villain just at one point being like, well... What, until we can think of our next step, I'm just going to play a tune to myself, you know? Love that. Beautiful. I feel like the movie also depicted this thing that people in privileged positions do, where they don't really realize um, how well off they are, mm -hmm. and they don't really, they aren't really attuned to or sympathetic to the challenges that people in um, disadvantaged situations yeah, like the, that, the challenges that they experience. I think it's also that thing where if you're in a bad place, sometimes you just kind of try to, sometimes it's too hard to actually fight for yourself and you, you just kind of accept things as they are, um, no matter how, um, how immoral they are, you just accept them as that because you have no other way to, have, you have no resources to actually do anything about it. And so you kind of fool yourself into feeling like it's okay. Mm -hmm. There's that one scene where the one wife starts to go through that, that Stockholm syndrome of like, yeah, but was it really that bad? Because is it worth leaving, you know? Because yeah. then you start to feel, and they're like, no, remember, that there, believe yourself enough to remember that you, it was bad enough that you decided to risk your life to leave. So hold on to that. But then sometimes you just think, yeah, but I mean, we were being treated pretty well comparatively to everyone else. So was it really that bad? Maybe we're being kind of selfish and in just being ungrateful for the life we had, you know, it's very mm -hmm. easy to people to fall into that. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot of juice in there. Yeah. yeah. Think about um, coming from an abusive family where one family, you're getting beaten up physically, and then the other family, it's emotional abuse. Mm -hmm. Who are you going to believe? You're going to mm -hmm. believe the family that the person who comes from a physically abusive family because mm -hmm. he has the bruises, mm -hmm. right? He, yeah. has the, he has the black eye. Yeah. You see them on the street. It's obvious they're suffering. Yeah. But yeah. then the, the emotionally abused person, they nothing no yeah. scars absolutely nothing so you're like yeah do you are you you know yeah. do you really have problems yeah so mad max for your road 10 out of 10 10 obvs. out of 10 don't even have to think about it <laughs> uh i've seen it about <laughs> half a dozen times and yeah it's twice uh, for me one of my all time favorites. yeah yeah yeah. Special. yeah yeah so well what do you guys think of mad max for your road we would uh we'd love to hear it put it down in the comments yeah put a give us a like or something like that do something let yeah. us know you're out something there. Something with your powers, your your powers <laughs> of having a YouTube profile. And uh, yeah, until next time. Bye. Bye.